everybody. Could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. For the first time, scientists have experimentally recreated the conditions found deep within the atmospheres of gas giant planets like Jupiter. Using an array of 176 lasers, scientists at the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California were able to precisely recreate the pressure and temperature conditions found within the planets Jupiter and Saturn. They then tested how a sample of carbon, specifically a diamond, reacted under such conditions. The result of that test? The diamond, the hardest and least compressible material on Earth, was compressed to a density greater than that of lead under normal conditions and then vaporized in 10 billionths of a second. The research was published in the journal Nature. Next up, from understanding how matter behaves inside of gas giants to attempting to understand the true nature of the universe itself, a group of physicists is working on a way to test the multiverse hypothesis. The multiverse hypothesis under consideration by these researchers is one which is a consequence of eternal inflation theory, which postulates that the rapid expansion of the universe following the Big Bang caused space to bubble, and that within each bubble of space is a separate, unique universe, expanding as its bubble expands, perhaps with physical constants different than those we find in our own universe, or our own bubble, if this hypothesis is correct. That, of course, has been the problem with this idea all along. How are we ever supposed to find out if this hypothesis is right or wrong? That's where the team from the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada comes in. The team is working to identify testable predictions of this version of the multiverse hypothesis and then devising ways to test those predictions. The first prediction they're testing is the result of two multiverses colliding with each other. Using a computer model to simulate the collision of two bubble universes, the team predicted that such a collision would leave evidence, a kind of bruise detectable in the cosmic microwave background radiation. So far, no such bruises have been found. The team is working on developing other tests, and most importantly of all, an exciting, compelling theory, sometimes derided as more metaphysics than physics, has been made subject to the grounded, testable methods of science. Shifting gears from astrophysics to medicine for this last one, doctors at the Cedars-Sinai Heart Institute have developed a gene therapy that equips ailing hearts with biological pacemakers. The cardiologists at Cedars-Sinai were able to genetically reprogram certain heart cells to keep the heart beating at its proper rate, correcting heart rhythm disorders that would typically be treated with a mechanical pacemaker. The procedure was originally intended as a short-term solution for patients who had become infected after having a mechanical pacemaker implanted. But results of this study have been so encouraging that the researchers think their biological pacemakers could eventually be a long-term treatment for patients with heart rhythm disorders. For some of the over 300,000 people who receive mechanical pacemakers every year in the United States alone, that would definitely be good news. Particle physicists recreate the interiors of gas giants under laboratory conditions, theoretical physicists devise ways of testing the multiverse hypothesis, and doctors use gene therapy to make pacemakers out of the heart's own cells. That's the good news. Yeah, it is. I know. Any last words this week?